Hello YouTube, this is Random Nation coming at you real quick. Um, I just wanted to point something out. Uh, my son is in band, and he plays the baritone. And he's he's really, really good. He owns two of them. Um, one of them's for marching and one's for uh, like concerts and stuff like that. It's called a beginner baritone. Um, but his beginner baritone, or his concert baritone, as I like to call it, because it just sounds more like him because he's not really a beginner anymore. Uh, his concert baritone, ha it was messed up. It wasn't working, and they couldn't figure out what was wrong with it, you know. And the teacher, bless his heart, he's a nice guy. He sends the thing off to some professionals. Notice the quotation marks in the air. Professionals. And they get it, and they have it for two and a half, almost three months. And in this two and a half, three months, they finally sent it back and said, we can't fix it, we don't know what's wrong with it. We get it here to the house. Now, keep in mind, I played baritone when I was in school. That was 20-something years ago. But I played baritone, and uh, he finally gets it and brings it home after two and a half, almost three months. And I take a look at it. I was like, you know what? I might not be able to fix it because the place that's supposed to be professional said they couldn't fix it. Let me take a look at it. I get over here looking at it, and I can see where one of the valves is a little bent, so I take a pair of needle nose pliers and straighten it out and everything. You know, and of course, they said they didn't want to do that because it would mess it up because it has to be 100% precise for it to, you know, work right. Well, I didn't have an issue with that. And then I got to looking on the bottom of these valves. They have little numbers on them. You know, and if you know anything about a baritone, it looks like a tuba. It's got three little buttons on it, you know, three valves. And each one of those valves are numbered, one, two, and three. Well, on the bottom of one of these little valve inserts that goes in it, the one that's messed up has a two on the bottom of it. Well, then I look to see what hole it's in, and it's in the one that says number three. So I said, okay, let me pull this out and stick it to this one. And guess what? It fixed it. That was it. The whole time, the only thing that was wrong with it was a little bit bend, which I fixed with a pair of needle nose pliers. It took about two seconds. Which I did take a piece of, I uh, guess you can say, like an SOS pad and shine them up and clean it all up real good and everything. But I put it in the proper slot. You know, I put it in the one that it's numbered for. So Winch tells me, you know, don't get me wrong, I'm not downing the teacher because he was doing what he could and he was trying to help us out because he knows we can't afford you know, paying five, six hundred dollars to have a baritone fixed. So, and I for the yeah, I really appreciate him trying, you know. But honestly, if I was him, I would never, ever take anything back to those people. Because if they had any kind of common sense, because even when I was a kid, I knew that those valves had to be in the right slots. Because if they ain't in the right slots, it ain't going to work right. You know, so I put them in the right slots, everything works fine. Nothing wrong with it. No, you know. the valve did have a ding in it. It had a ding in it, but I fixed that. But it had to be fixed, so it was fixed. A pair of needle nose pliers is all I did was took and bent that little end out just a little bit. I mean, all it is is a little round foot piece, and I straightened it back out to be more of a circle shape like it's supposed to be. And all it is is to where a spring can fit in there. So, yeah. But these people were supposed to be professionals. They're, you know, they've been working with baritones and stuff for, I think from what he said, like over 30-something years. And I haven't really messed with one in 20 years, and that was when I was 14 and 15 years old. <coughs> and I really only messed with the baritone for three years, even back then. And really, it was just tell playing them, it. Tell them how bad the concert band. Um... The one he borrowed from the school boys. Yeah, he had he had a concert today. No, it was last week. Oh, excuse me, I'm sorry. He had a concert last week. I work all the time, so I don't ever get to go to these things, so I never know when they're at when they are or where they're at, any of that kind of stuff. But he had a concert last week. And he had to borrow the school's baritone because his wasn't working because they couldn't get it fixed. Which, you know, wasn't that much of an issue, but this thing I've seen it myself, it looks like it literally got run over by a truck. I mean, they have not taken care of their equipment. 
my son, he's had his for two years now, and... Still looks brand new. Looks brand new. It has one little dent in it from where he hit something when he was turning around, but it's not... You know, it's like literally the size of your pinky. The one that the school has... Now, mind you, I do understand the fact that there has been, probably been hundreds of kids over the last probably ten years using that baritone, so it's in horrible shape. But you'd figure by now that they would, you know... At least bought another one. Get a new one. Um, I'm thinking, because I've been looking online and everything, and I found a couple of them that are cheaper brands. You know, they're not exactly the best brand in the world, but they look a lot better than the schools. I was thinking, you know, probably, uh, probably doing a donation type thing, seeing if I can find some people that are willing to donate enough money. You know, I'm going to put some in myself and everything, but if I can find enough people that will help donate in... We're going to get a baritone for the school for any kids that don't have baritones. They don't have to be out there with something that looks that bad. Um, I was ashamed. This is his. This is the baritone. Right here. This is the baritone. It's also known as a euphonium if you don't know what a baritone is. But it looks like a little tuba. But this valve right here basically it was in this slot this thing that's going up and down was in this spot and it would go down and it just wouldn't ever come back up so of course I take it from there and put it in here and magically guess what it works and you know and I'm sure those people probably pulled it out probably seen the number two on the bottom of the thing and said oh well you know they probably all say number two on them or something no they literally don't Tell them the difference between the um, this bass. is a concert baritone right here. Now you hold it up right. Yeah, this one when you play it, you're gonna hold it. Let me get it the right way. Pretty much the way I was holding it, like this. Okay. This one is gonna be a little bit more awkward to hold with one hand. Ow. Yeah, see, I can't hold this and the phone at the same time. Well, don't Can you hold the phone damage. without hitting the buttons? This one, on the other hand, is a marching band baritone. It sticks out frontward. So when you hold it, it's going to be out like this. I know I don't have a shirt on YouTube. Don't scream. Uh, but, you know, you hold it like this or... You know, there's a couple different ways you can hold it, but me, I'd have to hold it like this because my arms are so long. But he holds it like this or something. I don't he know exactly how he ball. holds it. I'd have to hold it down here. But you play it like this. Yeah. And this one, when he first got it, he got it from one of his friends. His friend gave it to him. And you see this valve right here, how it wiggles. Okay, when he first got it, this valve was broke. Okay, like I said, I haven't never really messed with uh, baritones too much as far as repairing them. But all I did was took a pair of needle nose pliers on the inside of it and fixed it. You know, because they, the people that owned it before, they took it to a professional shop. Once again, a professional shop that's supposed to know how to fix these things. And the professional so shop said they could not fix it, that he would have to buy a new baritone. Now, this is... Two professional musical shops. Okay? And both of them are trying to feed the same line of crap. Saying the same company. It's probably the same company, honestly. But this is two times with two different baritones. They're feeding the same line of crap saying they can't fix something. Now, the first one, I can understand them probably saying they can't fix it. Maybe they, you know, didn't want to engineer it the way I did with a pair of pliers, but they could have bought a new valve for it and put a new valve in it for less than 40 bucks. I just haven't done that because I don't really have that kind of money to spend on it. I figured it would just be easier to fix it to get it to work. And then when we have the money to save up to get it, it'll be fine. And it's worked. He's used it for two years like that, and it hasn't had no issues other than that thing wiggling. Um, so... My thought is, is they could fix these things. They just don't want to, because if they fix them, you have no reason to buy a new one. 
Now you got to keep in mind, a baritone normally sells for anywhere from one to five thousand dollars. We've gotten lucky; one of them was given to us. The other one, we paid I think five or six hundred dollars for. So, like I said, they're pissed off because we're saving a lot of money. We're not spending two, three thousand dollars on their baritones. One is a Mendini. I think the other one was a Yamaha. The, I'm not sure it's been specially engraved. Yeah, it's specially I think engraved. It's a Ju Jupiter. Yeah, she thinks it's a Jupiter. I think it's a Yamaha just because it feels like a Yamaha because of the weight of it. I think it's a Jupiter because of the way it's made. But it's the, a more expensive horn. She paid three thousand dollars for that horn. Yeah, she the lady paid three thousand dollars for this horn, and just because one valve's messed up, the place pretty much refused to fix it and said they couldn't fix it. I bring it here. When they give it to me, or to give it to him, I should say, and within 10 minutes I've got it to where it's playing and works just fine. Just like the one that we bought for him, the one that the valve was stuck and wouldn't come out and I ended up swapping it out. It took me literally 10 minutes looking at it to figure out that the valve was in the wrong spot. So that tells me that chances are when they got it to their shop, <laughs> I hear her theme song. Um, chances are when they got it to their shop, they didn't even take it apart. They just set it in the back and just let it sit there and kept saying they were looking at it, looking at it, trying to figure it out. Honestly, they never even looked at it because if they were any kind of real shop that really wants to fix it, they're going to look at it. And honestly, to be 100% honest, let me give you a good tip. If you have a hidden band and you ever have to take an instrument into a store to be checked out to see if it can be fixed... Okay? You take it in there. Before you leave it with them, you tell them you want to see them look at the issue right then. You don't want to leave it with them. You want them to tell you right then and there, before you leave that shop, whether they can fix it or not. Now, if they say, oh, we'll have to look at it later, say, okay, well, I can just take it to another shop and see if they can fix it, because I'm not leaving something with y'all for y'all to come back to me and say, I can't fix it. Just tell them, I have another shop that'll look at it. Nine times out of ten with musical instruments, most of those issues can be fixed fairly easy, fairly cheaply, without having to spend six, seven, eight hundred dollars trying to have it fixed. If I'd have took this baritone, actually the company that the teacher took it to to get it fixed said that if it had been us that took it to them, they would have charged us like six hundred bucks just for looking at it, and t just to tell us that you know they can't fix it. So, yeah, no. You want to look at the baritone, or you want to get my business, you want to get my money, you're going to look at it before I leave it, and you're going to tell me before I leave whether or not you can fix it. And if you tell me you can fix it, and I come back in three days and you tell me you can't fix it, you're not getting paid. Period. Because you told me when I left it, you could fix it. And don't expect when you come when I come back in there and you say you can't fix it, that you're going to say, but I have this nice new one over here I can sell to you for three... Th you know what I'm going to say? Take that nice new one and shove it where the sun don't shine. Because I'm not paying you for a baritone or any other kind of instrument. When you done told me you could fix mine, now you magically can't. Oh, I'm not familiar with the brand. That's an they excuse. All work the same. Every baritone works the same. Mind you, they have different style valves and stuff like that. You know, which makes it complicated. But you can actually look up Mendini baritones online. You can buy the specific valves, each valve sim simply online. I've actually looked it up. I found the valve that was in question that was broken. For ten bucks. A piece, that is. So, yeah. And I know I'm going a little long on this, but I was just a little upset about that. That The teacher has had this at a shop for two and a half, almost three months. And the guys tried to say, oh, we can't fix it. But and then going to let him borrow one that's run down yeah. to the grave. And I paid good money for him to be in band. And the... 
you know, the band director, he already knew that there was no way in hell we're going to buy one through them. So he didn't even offer us the paper that they gave him saying, well, you can come look at ours because we know better. We've already found plenty of places we can buy them for really cheap. So, I'm, I don't know. Like I said, I'm getting pretty much long-winded to repeat myself here. Uh, but you guys have a great day, and if y'all ever have any questions on any kind of instrument, you know, contact me, and I will tell you what I can. I mean, nine times out of ten, all it takes is a Google search to figure out what you need to know. All right, guys. Y'all have a great day, and I'll see y'all later. Have a random day.